And there are some things that we have to settle in our heart and settle some things so that we can move forward into all that the Lord has for us. This is the year of promise. We have declared and decreed, amen, that 2020 will be the year of promise. Little did we know that we would have to hang on to every promise in the Bible. Oh, Jesus. God, you said it, you said it, you said it, you said it. It's like, Lord, we got to hold on to all these promises, amen, that God has spoken, amen, in his word. Glory to God. Praise God. So we are facing an adversary, amen, who have declared war on the people of God and on the world. Not only is the people of God affected, but the entire world is affected by this unseen adversary. What I've been doing and attempting to do throughout this series, good morning, how y'all doing? Hey man, praise the Lord, sorry. Okay, yeah. What I've been doing and attempting to do throughout this series is to reveal the heart of God, reveal what God's heart is, but at the same time, um, bring the word of God to life so that you can walk this thing out and, and live a victorious life, even in the midst of struggle, even in the midst of things that's going on. We've been, we've been so in touch with our church family, you know, the prayer calls every morning, every morning from 6 to 7 a.m. and just praying and, you know, actively engaging our partners, amen, to, to encourage you to stay put, amen, to remain focused and be stable Amen. Because we are living in uncertain times and it's so easy to be distracted. We talked last week, we talked about how the adversary, amen, has has brought about these these weapons of mass distractions. Weapons of mass distractions. Amen. So so it's really he's just trying to distract us. All that's happening is trying to distract the church from its original purpose. God gave us an assignment and our assignment doesn't stop. Because the climate changes. Our assignment doesn't stop because it's raining outside, it's snowing, or or things is happening in the world. People are still closing their eyes and don't know Jesus. Amen? So we still have an assignment even in the midst of all that's happening outside. There is still the Great Commission. People still need to know who Jesus is. And they also need to know who we're fighting against and who we are warring against it's an invisible enemy just because something is not visible to our eyes it doesn't negate its effectiveness we talked about oxygen we talked about amen the wind amen there are a lot of things in the earth the 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 unseen wires that you don't see that's connecting amen my sound to the speakers amen there's a lot of things in the earth today that you don't see but yet is effective And so I want you to know that just because we can't see it, it doesn't mean it's not real. Amen? An invisible enemy is very treacherous. Think about this in the natural. If you had an enemy that you didn't know about in the natural, that enemy is treacherous. Why? Because you don't know that they're your adversary. But yet they appear to be a, a comrade. They appear to be a friend. And so that enemy is treacherous. In the same way, Satan, Satan, amen, uh, our arch enemy is very treacherous because he is invisible and he's doing a lot of things behind the scenes, amen, to try to cause havoc and chaos and mayhem in the earth today. He's doing a great job. You know, he's faithful to his job. Now we need the people of God to be faithful to their job. Because the adversary is faithful. Now we need the church to be faithful. It's time for us to be faithful in the kingdom of God. Now we need to be faithful. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Our adversary is very very cunning. He's very subtle, subtle. Amen. He doesn't come out all at once and let you know that it's him. And so we have to use discernment. And we have to be prayed up in this hour. We have to have a prayer life in this hour because This person or this spirit that we can't see is trying to cause things to happen in the scene. Amen? Amen. There are no vacancies allowed in the spirit of man. Listen to this real quick. Either you are filled with God's love, amen, or you are filled with Satan's hate. There are no vacancies in the spirit of man. Either you're filled with the love of God or you're filled with the hate of an adversary. Amen? Amen? That didn't go across very well. Amen. That didn't go across everywhere. 
that ain't go across real good. Because hate doesn't come from God. Hate only comes from one person and one spirit. It's, it's the adversary. It's a devil. Amen. It's not a person. But he uses people. Every spirit needs a body. God can't operate in the earth without you. Satan can't operate in the earth without a body. Just like God uses people, the devil uses people. You understand? Yeah. He's not walking around. You just see these fleets of angels just walking around and causing all this kind of havoc. You don't see it, but you see the impact. Yeah. Amen. You see things happening where we think we're just looking in the natural. There's, there's in a lot of cases, there, there's this adversary that's behind the scenes. He, there's an adversary behind the scenes pushing all kinds of buttons. Saying, won't you do this and won't you do that? Come on, we deal with it in marriage all the time. I know my married couple's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, see, when you think it's just your thoughts, a lot of time it's not your thoughts. But it sounds like you, but it's not your thoughts. And so you think it's you. Amen? Amen. But heaven's agenda will prevail. Yes. Jesus said the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Heaven's agenda will prevail in this hour. All right, y'all ready to get in the word? Yeah. All right, let's dive on in. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, we're going to look at verse 3. We're going to start reading verse 3. Uh, this is our foundation scripture for this series. It says, uh, of course, of course we are human, but we don't fight like humans. Of course we are humans. Verse 3. Of course we are, hey, thank you, thank you, thank you. Of course, we are human, but we don't fight like humans. We are all humans, but we don't fight like humans. Yeah. From time to time, we have struggles in life, just like Paul is saying. This, this is Paul talking, saying, listen, I'm a human being just like you. We are all humans, but, but some of our struggles sometimes in life, you know, will cause us to act out in a human fashion. But he's letting us know that we don't have to fight like the humans fight. We have to do everything that human beings do. Amen. So he's saying, look, we're all fleshly beings, but this is not how we fight or wage our war. Verse four says the weapons we use in our fight are not made by humans. Rather, they are powerful weapons from God. Where, where, where are they from again? From God. So the weapons that God give us are not a gun. It's not a knife. Amen. I mean, I'm not saying you can't have those things, but those are not weapons that God have issued. Amen. You know, cussing somebody out. Amen. All, all these are human weapons. These are flesh hating on people. You understand? You know, bitterness, wrath, rage. All these things are contrary to the weapons that God have issued us. God has issued us powerful weapons and they come from God. With them, we destroy people's defenses. That is their arguments. And people have a lot of arguments, but the word of God destroys their arguments. Amen? Amen. It destroys their arguments and all, all their intellectual arrogance that oppose the knowledge of God. Let me say that again. Let me read it again so you get it all four and five. The weapons that we use in our fight are not made by humans. Rather, they are powerful weapons from God. With them, we destroy people's defenses, that is, their arguments, and all their intellectual arrogance that oppose the knowledge of God. So the Bible is saying in a real sense that, that arrogance and pride, amen, is not something that God has issued. It's not a weapon that God has issued. So, so these, the, the arrogance or the prideful is, a, is opposing the knowledge of God. Have you ever experienced somebody in pride? I used to be in pride a whole lot, amen, back in the days. I know what pride is. I can spot it a mile away, amen, because I used to walk in it. And so, so but, but pride and arrogance, amen, will, will cause you to oppose the things of God, to come against the knowledge of God, even though God said it, but... Even though the word spoke it, but like we have a better way. I know a better way. I know what God said, but, but I know a better way. I know a different way. So we take every thought captive so that it is obedient to Christ. Our thoughts, your thoughts, my thoughts sometimes run rampant. Thoughts are all over the place. 
thinking about how we're going to do this, how we're going to get this done, how we're going to get that done. And if we're not careful, there will also be opportunities for thoughts to come, amen, that are con- so contrary to the word, and we have to be careful. Because you have to remember that we have this unseen enemy that's also trying to stir up trouble. Amen? Yeah. So we have to make sure that the thoughts that are running rampant, amen, we would hold them captive until it obeys Christ. I can get a thought, no, I need to cast that down. Nope, devil, you a liar. Until you obey Christ, you're not, I'm not just going to keep thinking a certain way when I know it opposes God. I'm not going to keep going along with a certain thing when I know it opposes God. It's contrary to the word of God, so I have to denounce it. I have to hold it captive and deal with it. Amen. I have to punish these thoughts. The, these are things we do in the spirit. We don't fight in the natural. You understand? See, all of us, we're used to throwing our dukes up. But, you know what I mean? But people don't throw dukes up today. Amen. But, but again, all those weapons are worldly weapons. And God has issued us some different weapons, and he's teaching us how to fight different. Amen? Yeah. So I must create a habit of dealing with my thought life. I can't let my thoughts just be all over the place. Let my thoughts just be thinking all type of stuff that is ungodly. Because if I, the main reason that people walk out certain things that's contrary to the word is because of what they've been thinking. So they're thinking it first. It's happening in their thought life first long before they walk it out. Long before they start doing it, they're thinking it. And when you're thinking it and then you're meditating on it, next thing you know, you're walking it out. You know, and sometimes you don't want to walk out things that's ungodly. You don't want to walk out the things that doesn't line up with the word of God. So what do I do with those thoughts? Just let them exist? No, I have to capture those thoughts. I have to punish those thoughts. I have to deal with those thoughts that are going through my head. Pull those thoughts down. Another translation said, pull down those imaginations. Cast down those imaginations, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. I mean, I have to pull down those thoughts. And so since I've been saved 25 years ago, I'm still pulling thoughts down. I still get crazy thoughts every now and then that I have to say, devil, you a liar. Because I know I didn't think that. I know I didn't want to do that. And so when I get something crazy, I'm like, what? No. Devil, you a liar. That's not true. No, no. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to say that. (laughs) So we don't just let those thoughts exist. I mean, if the devil, if a demon was sitting there right there talking to you, 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 would, you wouldn't just sit there and talk to him. But why do we talk to him out here? If you could see him, you wouldn't be talking to him. If you could see him, you wouldn't be going back and forth having a conversation with this invisible adversary that's trying to destroy you. But because we can't see him and it sound like us, we think it's us. We think it's us. And so sometimes we, we're debating God, even in our thoughts. We're, we're debating with God, and we're, we're trying to figure things out that he's already figured out. I don't need to try to figure something out that God already figured out for me. There is no other way. He's already given me the word. He's already showed me the way. So there is no other way. There is no better way. It's just the way that he's already spoken. And I have to make a decision, do I want to follow Jesus? Do I want to follow the Lord? Or do I want to follow my own thoughts? Do I want to follow my own wisdom? Amen? Amen. Verse 6 says this, says, We are ready to punish every act of disobedience when you have become completely obedient. We must take dominion over every disobedient thought. Thoughts of anger, rage, lust, bitterness, and evil must be captured and punished. Captured and punished. We say, like, who do you think he is? Who do you think she is? Yeah, let him do that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Not saying it, thinking it. Thoughts. Let him say something to me again. Let him say something to me again. These are thoughts, but as believers, we got to do something with that. Because that could lead to something else. We can't just let those thoughts exist. I remember my wife and I, we used to have heated fellowship. I mean, a lot, 
I mean, much worse than it is today. We've been married 25 years now. I mean, man, it's, I'm telling you, I'm like in heaven, man. Yeah. If, I mean, if heaven is anything like living with her and being with her, then I'm, I mean, I know heaven is better, of yeah. course, 10 times better. Yeah. But, oh, my goodness, I'm enjoying it right now. But we used to have a heated fellowship. We get arguments early in my Christian experience, and I would get some crazy thoughts. I remember I was in the car one time, and I was riding with her, and, uh, and, and I had this, you know, uh, this, I knew it was the devil, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we going back and forth, back and forth, and I heard it was plain as day. The, the devil say, smack her. <laughs> I laughed. I laughed. I said, and I told her, I said, see, that's what you got to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to expose yeah, the devil. Yeah, that's right. Because, see, he think he can talk yeah. to you about certain things. Yeah that don't nobody else know about. And so that's how he keep you in bondage. That's how he keep you captive. That's how he keep you locked down because you're not telling nobody what you're dealing with. You're not telling nobody what you're really going through. And so you're, so you're talking to this invisible enemy thinking he's your friend. And when I told her, I said, honey, the devil just told me to smack you. She said, well, you better not listen. I knew I won't go listen. You know what I'm I knew I won't go listen, but... But that was early in my life, and I didn't. I, I, I was learning how to deal with what, what was going on in the inside of me. Before Christ, I didn't have Jesus. I didn't have no other way. I only had my thoughts, and this is what I'm going to do. Oh, okay, that sounds good. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to try that. Oh, let me see what this looks like. But now that I'm saved, you know, I have Holy Spirit, and you have the, the Lord and the Word of God and all that is helping you to combat these thoughts that you know are contrary to the Bible. You know it don't line up with the word, but yet you believe it's going to end well. Somehow, some way, it's going to end well for me, even though everybody else fell in that hole. It's right there. It's a hole. Listen, it's a hole right there. Amen. Everybody before you walked in it, but you're not. You go somehow, you're going to miss it. No, and Sandy is doing the same thing, but expecting something different to happen. You do the exact same thing, you're going to get the exact same results. You want something different, you got to do something different. So, so that means I have to do something different. I have to change the way I think and change the way I look at certain things because I want different results. So I have to deal with my thoughts. And when I begin to deal with my thoughts, my life got better. I begin to expose the adversary and tell on him and tell all the lies that he's trying to tell me. Hey, man, I had to deal with some things, and that's what we have to do. We have to deal with this adversary and expose him. Amen. He loves to hide in the dark. That's right. That's right. <sighs> Jesus said, you know, I think it's Ephesians 5 or something, he said, you know, talk about exposing the unfruitful works of darkness. You know, we got to expose that. It's unfruitful. It's a work of darkness. The Bible said men love darkness because their deeds are evil. So we come to the light. We come to the light. It's like, it's like shine the light on me, Lord. I'm ready to be exposed. Shine the light on me. I'm ready to surrender my life to you. All that I'm going through doesn't matter. All the dumb stuff I'm doing, all the stupid thoughts and all that kind of stuff. When I come to Jesus, I'm ready to surrender it all. I'm not hiding anything, Lord. I'm surrendering my entire life to you. But sometimes we don't, we don't give God everything. We just, God, I just want to give you anger right now. Or I just want to give you, uh, you know, I want to give you drinking right now. Uh, I'm still going to cuss somebody out when I feel like it. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to smoke a J every now and then because, you know, I just want to hold on to that right now. I'm going to sleep with him or her right now because I'm just not there yet. But what God wants is our entire life. He doesn't want a piece of us. He doesn't want a part of us. He wants our entire being, and we surrender our life to him, not that he's going to make us, that he's going to transform us overnight, but when you give yourself to the Lord, you give him all of you. And a lot of times, because we're trying to hold back certain things, you know, we keep falling. When just surrender it all. You're not perfect. We're not perfect. We're going to keep walking through. You're going to still make mistakes. You're going to still bump your head, but give him all of your life. Give him everything that he can, because God knows how to, through his wisdom, he knows how to uh, be strategic in pulling you out of those things yeah. that, that will cause you to fall. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen? All right. Wow. I just I had to work with that a little bit, man. Ooh, y'all work me this morning. Y'all working me. <laughs> First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. It says the Holy Spirit has explicitly, explicitly revealed at the end of this age 
many will depart from the true faith one after another, devoting themselves to spirits of deception and following demon-inspired revelations and theories. Th this is the time that we're living in right now. We're, we're living in a peculiar time. We're living in a, you know, it's peculiar, it's serious, amen, but yet it's not something that God is surprised about. See, if God is not surprised, then his children shouldn't be surprised. Because we're in the word of God, I'm not surprised about a day, amen, that, that's already been spoken. I'm surprised about stuff he never told me. Like, oh, he ain't never told me that. Oh, okay. But no, everything that's, that's, that's already been spoken is going to happen. So, again, Holy Spirit has explicitly revealed at the end of this age, what age? The end of a church age. The end of a church age. We don't know when the end of that age is, but the end of the church at the end of the age, meaning getting closer to a time when the church will be raptured out of this place. The end of an age, this age. Many will depart from the true faith one after another, devoting themselves to spirits of deception and following demon-inspired revelation theories. Pastor, why are you talking about invisible enemy? Because I want to make sure that every believer under the sound of my voice and those that listen online, podcasts, YouTube, and however they hear this message will understand when they're dealing with a demon-inspired adversary. When they're getting revelation that doesn't line up with the Bible or theories that doesn't line up with the scripture, you can know what to do with it. You can know how to deal with it. Because if you don't know how to deal with it, then you're going to be deceived, as the Bible says. Many will be. This is talking to the church. This is not talking to unbelievers. This is not talking to people that, that don't know the Lord. He is talking to the church. He's talking to believers you're not going if you go, how can you fall away from something where you, that you never had anyway? So you're talking about falling away from the Lord. So not just talking about falling, yeah. So, so we have to be careful. Many well-being believers will be deceived by this invisible enemy. We've heard so many reports, even in the last years, the last couple years, amen, of pastors and worship leaders and people who just decided at some point that, you know, I don't believe the Bible. They're coming out one after one like the Bible is not real. I don't believe the Bible. I thought I did, but now I don't. And so it's already started. It's already begun. You understand? And so we as the people of God, we have to make sure that we fortify ourselves, that we don't get a place, get to a place in our life where we decide God ain't real. Because we're looking at the things that's happening around us, and then we will begin to say stuff like, well, if God was real, why did he let that happen? Well, if God is real, why did he take auntie? Why did he let so-and-so happen? Why this happen? Why that happen? You know, God, just so God, it will end up being mad with God. That, that stuff don't work. It doesn't work. This adversary that's trying to come up against us, this invisible enemy, amen, is playing on, on our, our word knowledge. He's playing on our heart. And so one of the pastors said, or one of the worship leaders, he was a worship pastor, he said, you know, he, it was, he'd been out of the faith a long time, but yet he's still writing music. He'd been walked away from God, but yet he's still writing songs as if he was still with God. He said he just had the courage to just go ahead and say it. It's the same thing. It's like it, it's all being repeated. Nothing happens Amen. By chance or accident, nothing new under the sun. Judas, long before he left Jesus and betrayed him, already portrayed him in his heart. Long before you actually leave the faith, it's going to start in your heart, which is going to start in your head first, which deals with thoughts. That if you don't deal with those thoughts, you're not going to be able to deal with what's coming after the thoughts. You get long down the road and then we're making decisions. You know, this, we, that's why we see celebrity, we see other people, people try to take their life for certain things. It's dealing with thoughts. It's dealing with thoughts. It's a thought that came. And we have to do something with the thought that comes 
to our head. Or otherwise, we're going to act it out. We're going to act out that thought. And so this is what all of this is about. About. Amen? Amen. Matthew 24, verse 10. Verse 10. Matthew 24, verse 10 says, and then just another scripture kind of saying something similar. You know, if you read the whole Matthew 24, it's going to tell you a whole lot. But um, tell you that we, we are going through uh, like the great tribulation, not the great tribulation, but maybe trials and tribulations right now. It's not the great tribulation. Uh, Matthew 24, verse 10 says, And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And then many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. There are so many people waiting for an opportunity to deceive you. People are waiting and they're watching and they're listening to what you say to see if you say something that sounds remotely similar to what they're saying, even though it's, it's, it's not the truth, it's mixed with a lie. But you, if they hear you say enough that sounds like they can put a hook in your mouth and wheel you on in. Many will fall away, listen, and betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. Many believers will be blinded by betrayal and hatred, and this will allow them to become targets of deception. When you allow hate to come in your heart, and that's why we have to be careful of the, of the movement and everything that's happening even in society today. Because if you let hate get in your heart for anybody, regardless of what they've done, amen, you got to understand that you're in danger of hellfire at that point. Hate is such a strong word. You know, we, 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 we didn't allow our kids to use it in the house or at all. We didn't use it either as examples to our children. I hate this. I no. You don't hate it. You just don't like it. You don't hate it. Hate that. that, Nah, you don't hate it. But hate, 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 hating one another is a sign that you're falling away as a believer. Hating somebody because the color of their skin is a sign that you're falling away. I said hating them. Hating is a sign that you're falling away. It's an end time prophecy, amen, that you're falling away from the things of God. Look, hold your finger there real quick. Second Corinthians, let me look at second, second Corinthians real quick. Second Corinthians, I want to bring this out real quick. I, I kind of pause that. Second Corinthians chapter 11, some, some similar, verse 13, 13 through 15. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 13 through 50 is the Passion Translation. Amen. Praise God. All right. For they are not true apostles, but deceitful ministers who masquerade as special apostles of the anointed one. That doesn't surprise us, for even Satan transforms himself to appear as an angel of light. To appear as an angel of light. To appear that he's for you. Satan would transform himself into an angel of light and his ministers to appear, amen, that he's for you, that he cares about you, that he's with you. Verse 15 says, so it's no wonder his servants also go about pretending to be ministers of righteousness, but in the end they will be exposed and get exactly what they deserve. Many are being exposed even now and during these times. Stay saturated, saints, in the word of God. Stay close to the Bible. Stay in the book. Don't allow anyone to sway you away from God's word because of human philosophies, amen, and arrogance and pride. Don't don't allow those, those type of spirits to try to get on you, to cause you to get outside of the will of God because you're not justified in that. You're not justified in that amen? amen you know we we've taught and trained that you know if if if, if my daughter is already in trouble these are my both my 
girls right here too, by the way. If my daughter is in trouble already, there's no need for the other daughter to get in trouble with her. You know what I'm saying? Two, two wrongs don't make a right, right? Then we grew up like that. Two wrongs don't make a right. So, you know, so somebody have to stand up and do the word of God. Yeah. Somebody have to stand up and do the right thing. Yeah. Because if that person's already in trouble, let them be in trouble. Yeah. Shoot, I ain't going to get in trouble with you. Yeah. I'm not going to get outside my character as a believer and act like somebody that's act like the way somebody is treating me and then get judged right alongside them. No. If you already going to be judged, then go ahead. I'm going to leave you alone. I'm not going to get in there with you because I don't want to go through the same thing or suffer the same fate as well. Amen. Just want to throw that in as just kind of companion scripture. Let's go back to verse. Go, let's go back to the second. I mean, Matthew, 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 chapter 24, Matthew 24. Verse 12, ver verse 12 says this, and because lawlessness will increase, will be increased, lawlessness will be increased, we, s we see it happening right now, all before our eyes. Lawlessness, mayhem, disorder, chaos, the love of many will grow cold. Guard your love life. Protect your love life with all you got. Guard your love. The Bible says it's, it's the love of God that's shed abroad in our heart by Holy Spirit. It's his love. It's, it's not our love. It's not our love. Our love is conditioned. His love is unconditional. Amen. So, so let's allow God's love to flow through us that we can love as he loved. We can forgive as he forgives. Like when they were singing that song about mercy, I'm like, Lord, we all need mercy. Yeah. You got to remember something. The mercy that you give somebody else or not give somebody else, it will be measured back to you. The same measurement that you measure out will be God going to pull the cup out, and he's going to measure it. The same way you measure them, he's going to measure it back to you. Amen. So that's what I'm saying. Be careful. Give people all the mercy and all the grace that they need. Amen. That they need. Because I don't need God measuring it back to me. When I need grace and when I need mercy, when I need God to take it easy on me, I don't need him treating me like I just tra tra treated the last person. Are you hearing me this morning? <laughs> so the love of many will grow cold it will grow cold because you know sometimes the love is more about self not the things of God or the people of God the, sometimes the love is, is wrapped up in the applause of men not giving honor to Christ and then verse 13 says but the one who endures to the end will be saved the one who endures to the end man I'm telling you man we still breathing y'all we still got to make it to the end. We got to make it to the end of our life still loving the Lord. Because you love him now. It doesn't guarantee it. I hope, I wish it would. But we have to endure to the end. To the end. And so I protect my life and my walk with God with everything it means more to me than anything else my love for God is more important than my love for anybody else in the natural and the proof that I love God is how I love other people because how can you love God so much who you haven't seen but yet you can't love that brother sitting next to you who you see every day every week we love God but then we love people but we love God more than we love people. We love God more than we love our spouse. My wife loves God more than me. I love God more than her. Why? Because if I didn't, my love would be conditioned. And I would treat her based on how I feel, felt today or tomorrow. Amen? But I treat her based on my love for God. Like she said, we get the overflow of our relationship with God. It's the overflow. Amen. So it's a joy. Amen. It's a joy, <laughs> amen, to, 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 you know, I keep talking about my spouse, amen, praise God. So it's a joy to love. It's a joy to love. This is not marriage counseling or, or um, this is not uh, covenant keepers <laughs> meeting, but praise God. Amen. Yeah, so, so, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. Last thing before I, before I kind of close out, I got about 15 minutes. I'm probably going to use all of them. Amen. I'm pretty sure I'm going to use them, so you, if you want to look at your clock and time me, just getting your heads up, I will probably use all of them. And the 13, 12 seconds, 11 seconds, 10 seconds, 9 seconds, 
Yeah, all of it. All right. All right. So our invisible enemy is attempting to infiltrate the church, infiltrate the church and to mislead the people of God. This is why we need watchmen. Earth. So I want to close out talking about watchmen briefly. That's why we need watchmen in the earth today. Jesus told the disciples that once upon a time that they needed to watch as well as pray. So, so we pray, and we do a great job at praying, but we also need to watch. So their watchmen were very significant in the Old Testament times. Watchmen, you know, who, who were on their posts, amen, who were, who were on God to protect families and villages and, and even communities from, from these attacks of enemies who are trying to come in to destroy everything. So a watchman, amen, should always be someone who's on post. So what is a watchman? By definition, I looked it up. It said watchman. Watchman is derived from the Hebrew verb meaning to look out or about, to spy, to keep watch, to lean forward, to peer into the distance. A watchman is alert. A watchman is aware. A watchman is paying attention. You know, we're, 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 listen, if you never paid attention, you should be paying attention now. If you never paid attention in your life, you know, and I was that, that person in school where, they, where, where, you know, when I, they got my report card home, the, the teacher would say, he just don't pay attention. You know, my mom had to hear that every week. Like, he just, I mean, well, when he get a report card, Anthony doesn't pay attention. You know, I'm somewhere else. Like, some people be sleeping in church. You understand? That's, that's called being somewhere else. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're not paying attention. You're, you're somewhere else. You should be here, but you're thinking about what you're going to eat for dinner. You're thinking about where we go when we leave here, but yet, and then you're missing important information, and you're missing nuggets, something that could perhaps change your life, or it could be a word that will help you a month from now, two weeks from now, but yet the adversary, this invisible enemy, got you thinking about something else. He done checked you out. You know what I'm saying? You done, you done checked out of this place. And if you let him, he'll have your thoughts all over the place, somewhere totally different. Then, then you come back like, dang, I missed like, man, what was that like? I missed two. Sh- I checked out two scriptures ago. <laughs> and then we wonder. Then we wonder why we can't defeat this unseen adversary. We wonder why we live and, and, and can't get past The smallest little things, because we're not engaged, leaning in. I'm a watchman. Like, what is he going to say next? We're too laid back. Some of us just coming to church. And church never helped people. (laughs) It's a building. We the church. The ecclesia, you got to know, you're the church, you're the building of God, you're the one God is building up. We're going to build a building, but you're the one that God wants to really build. Can he build you up? You are the temple of God. And he's been building on you for a while now. Can, he, can, can we build you up? Can we get you built? Can we get this done? Pastor, we've been talking about this building a long time. Yeah, God, Pastor, I've been, yeah, we've been talking about building you up for a long time too. We've been talking about building your body up for a long time, too. and he, he, Uh-huh, yeah. Well, be patient. <laughs> As I am with you. <laughs> Amen? Just throw that in in case, the, you know, we're getting delays in the building and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Pastor already told us, be patient. Yeah, so in the natural, watchmen were set upon towers to alert or warn people when the enemy was coming. If the enemy slipped past the watchmen, the village or the camp would be compromised or destroyed. If, the, if, if an enemy slipped past the watchmen, what would happen to the people? We're all watchmen in the church, in our homes. We're the watchmen in the natural that God has called to be on our post, to be paying attention to what's going on. You're the watchman in your home, man of God. Woman of God, if it's a woman, you're, you're the watchman in your house, woman of God. Yeah, you have to make the tough decisions. That no doors closed and all computers downstairs and, and, you know, and whatever the rules are, that phones and off at a certain time, whatever those rules are, that's because you are watchmen. Yeah. Kids don't like it but because they don't understand how it's going to keep them safe. They don't understand that there's an adversary trying to slip in, that somebody's trying to get to you. 
They don't see it. All they see is mama being mean, daddy being mean. They don't want me to have nothing. They don't want me to do nothing. They don't want me to go nowhere. It's not the truth. That's not the truth. That's not the truth. It's not the truth at all. But there are watchmen out here. Isaiah 62 and 6. Say, I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silent. God has set you as a watchman. If you're born again Christian, you are a watchman. Watchmen were critical in those days and they're critical right now. Do not remain silent as a watchman. You are to warn people when the adversary is near. When things are contrary to the word of God, when it don't line up, when it don't measure up. You are watchmen. A people without a watchman or a watchtower is defenseless. Not paying attention. That's why so much stuff happened on our watch. Why? Because you're not paying attention. You hear people say that, not on my watch. Why? Because not on my watch. Not on my watch that's going to happen. Not on my watch is going to. No. But folks that's not paying attention, anything that's happened. Anybody, they let it all, all kind of devils just pass on by. Go on here. All right. I was trained as an usher even at the door when, I'm, when I would greet people and hug people. You understand? A, a usher is a spiritual position. That's why you got to be vigilant. You got to pay attention. Not just security. Security is the natural. They're more natural, but they're spiritual too. But ushers is a supernatural position. It's supernatural. You break bond. You break depression off people as they come to the door. You can see somebody need a hug. You can see somebody need some, you, you know, you, you, you're supposed to be discerning. Can't be on our post playing on the phone and talking and just playing around like we're not paying attention. We have to be tuned in to what the Lord is doing and what the Lord is saying and who the Lord may say, you need to say this to so-and-so. This is supernatural. This is not natural. It's supernatural. Many casualties are happening to earth right now because of lack of watchmen. Everybody wants to say the same thing because don't nobody wants to be criticized. Everybody wants to go with the flow because don't nobody want no heat coming up behind them. That's not a watchman. That's somebody that's scared. When you got a watchman, hey man, they speak what thus saith the Lord. Ezekiel, God said, look, when I tell you speak, you say it. Because their blood not going to be on your hands, brother. But if you don't say what I tell you to say, if you don't warn the wicked, if you don't warn them and they die in their sin, I'm going to hold you accountable for, for what you did not tell them. So we can't walk around not saying what needs to be said, you understand, because of what people might think. You have to speak the truth of the word of God because it could save somebody's soul and deliver them from hell. It could. Mark chapter 14, verse 38, Jesus said it right here, keep watch and pray so you will not give in to temptation for the spirit is willing, but the body is weak or the flesh is weak. Jesus combined the natural and the spiritual when he said to watch natural and pray, which is spiritual. He combined, he said, listen, I know you're praying. We got prayer warriors in here and we pray a lot. We want to be watchful as well. Make sure you're watching as well. Keep your eyes open. Worship leaders, when you're singing, keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open. Yeah, we can go in and go in and hold it, hold it for a minute, but then open your eyes back up. Watch as well as pray. Don't just be singing with your eyes closed. Like you just don't want to see us. No, you a warrior on the front line. You a watchman, and you stand bold. Amen. And you look a person in their soul and you tell them what the Lord said as you're singing to them, as you're speaking the word of God, you're ministering to their soul. But if you close their eyes, they can't see you. They won't catch what you're trying to give them. You got something to give away. Amen. That's godly. Give it to them. Oh. Amen. That's why my eyes open. What if I talk to you and close my eyes every now and then? When y'all think that was strange? Okay, great. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we, you, 
and I, we're born again, but we live in the natural and the spirit. We live in the natural and the spirit. We're in both worlds as believers. We get to live in both worlds as believers. You're a powerful creature. You're powerful. You're powerful. You're powerful. Did I read Habakkuk yet? Okay. Habakkuk 2 and 1 says, I will stand like a guard and watch. I will wait to see what the Lord will say to me. I will wait and learn how he answers my question. The more you are watching, the more you are praying, the more the Lord will reveal to you. The more you're watching, the more you're praying, the more the Lord will open things up to you. Well, Pastor, I don't understand this. Don't, the more you're praying, the more you're watching, the Lord will reveal things to you. Praying to the Lord this morning, God, tell me what's going on. What is my next move, God? Talk to me. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Order my steps. Direct my path. I, I'm not out here on my own. You said you would never leave me nor forsake me. What, what is it? What, what is happening? I see all this stuff. But Lord, show me what's going on. Uh, no, he's real to me. I'm not just out here reading a book and reading some scriptures. The Lord is real. He is real. God, reveal your heart to me. Reveal your plan to me. God will show you the enemy's plan when you're watching and you're praying. He'll show you what he's trying to do. He'll show you that. That's why we cannot be sleep spiritually. So much has happened in our society. We cannot be desensitized to the truth of God's word. This is my last scripture right here. Daniel, pick this up next week in Daniel chapter 7. Uh, verse 25, he says, and he shall speak great words against the most high and shall, and I got this underlined, and shall wear out the saints of the most high. You know, Daniel is an end time prophet. Daniel in the book of Revelation, Dan Daniel is an end time prophet. A lot of things that Daniel speak is talking about the end times. He's talking about what's to come. The, the, the adversary, and I get a chance, I may show you that next week, how, how he came against Daniel. But the adversary is trying to wear out the saints. You ever had somebody try to get you to do something that's, that's ungodly? They just keep asking you over and over and over again. They're trying to wear you out. They're trying to wear you down. They're trying to wear you down. Or sooner or later, they're going to yield to me. I know they said no the first time. But that's the adversary. The devil wants to wear out the saints. He wants to wear you down. He wants to wear you down so he can wear you out. And we have to be watchful. We have to be spiritual watchmen in our families. Our families will be safe because somebody is on God. Watchmen are on God. Your family can rest at night, can sleep at night. Why? Because there's a watchman at home. There's a watchman on post. You know, we, like I talked about earlier, we're praying. The church is praying. And we're praying and interceding for the church. And while you're at home, and whether you're on the call or not, amen, Monday through, Monday through Friday, amen, we're still praying for you. We're still interceding. We are watching for you. We are watching and we're praying and we're interceding for you on a daily basis because we're the spiritual watchman. In, a, in, in this church. We're the spiritual watchmen in this church. Look, in the book of Joel, it says, lift up the ram's horn. Let a sound go out to warn the people that the enemy is approaching. Lift up the ram's horn. This adversary has been approaching for a long time. And that's why God gave us messages like counterfeit kingdom. God gave us messages like mind shift. God gave us messages like be ready. Come on now, see, see these things that they didn't make sense then because we were just living our life and, ah, oh, that's just that. And we just went on about our business not really knowing what God was getting ready to do or what he was getting ready to allow. And so instead of being prepared, we're struggling in our mind and we're, 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 we don't know what to do. We're wrestling and we don't know whose side we are. We don't know whether we're with the Lord or we're this person, that person, this group, that group. Who you with? Who you rolling with? Confusion. Why? Because you ain't saturated. Because you wouldn't be confused. It's so plain. But you ain't saturated so you can't see. 
You can't see. You only can see what you see. Amen? Amen. Listen, I'm going to stop right there. Get the Lord a hand, clap of praise. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I like every head bow, please. Amen. Every head bow. Nobody looking around. Nobody.